Sarge. Uh, what do you reckon, Governor? A fiver will be out of here in ten minutes flat, all right? Police. Detective Inspector Godfrey and Sergeant Cooper, are you the Mr. Bob Tilly that rang? Yes, Inspector. Oh. There's Philip. And none of us have touched anything. Check it out, will you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Go oh, in, Sarge. Peepers. Of course. Now then, sir, what makes you so sure it was suicide? Well, the note. Uh, we found it on the mantel shelf. It was addressed to Leslie, so she opened it. I'm sorry about this, miss. I don't want to sound callous at a time like this, but uh, may I read that? Darling L, I can't live without you or my love, P. Well, it's shortened to the point. Is this the deceased's handwriting? Yes, it is. The D's look different. Uh, uh, I'm Leslie Hamilton. I have the flat below this one. I heard the shot. <laughs> well, it all seems to fit, Sergeant. Only one bullet in the body, Governor. And at the right temple, killed him outright. Mm. But... But what? This gun... Yeah. This gun has been fired twice recently. But there was only one shot. Well, I was coming up the stairs at the time and I only heard one shot. You know what this means, Governor? Yes. I'm out of pocket. Welcome back to another series of Who Done It. Now, you didn't think that was a suicide for a moment, did you? Otherwise, there wouldn't be a Who Done It to solve. Now, in a minute, we'll show you lots of clues and red headings to sort out. But first, let me introduce you to our panel who will be committing suicide if they don't get it right. First, our regular duo, a lovely lady who the last time asked all the right questions and then promptly got it wrong, Lisa Goddard. <laughs> And yes, ladies, we've got the old bloodhound himself back for the whole series, Patrick Mower. <laughs> now, each week they will be joined by two guest stars, the first of whom is a lady whose versatility not only ranges from comedy to drama, uh, so let's see what she's like as a sleuth. Diana Coupland. And if you're not too worried about solving the crime, but could do with a few laughs, then you'll be very glad to see that we have once again, Alfred Marx. <laughs> right, without further ado, let's get back to the story. Now, always remembering that murderers are bound to lie. Inspector Godfrey and Sergeant Coop have spent the last few minutes in a Bayswater flat trying to find the second bullet. As yet, no sign. So I'll give them and you a clue. It isn't there. Work that one out. Poor old Philip. Inspector, I suppose the balance of his mind was disturbed. No, dead right, Mr Tilly. I mean, somebody held a gun up to his mind and deliberately disturbed it. What? Well, it's all too neat, isn't it? The unfinished wine, the unfinished cigar, the farewell note and goodbye world. Well, I suppose some people do it that way. Oh, indeed they do, but my sergeant is searching for that second bullet all over the place, all over the flat, and there's no signs of it. So when was it fired? And another thing, the ash on that cigar, Mr Drury must have put it down at least ten minutes before he was killed. But the door was locked when I came up. Well, I don't doubt it. I mean, if you were going to kill somebody, you would lock the door, wouldn't you? It would discourage invaders, wouldn't it? Intruders, and then you might uh, make your getaway through this window here and down the fire escape. Oh, surprise, surprise. It's open. Sergeant, oh. check it out. Right. Now then, you said that the door was locked when you came up here, Miss Hamilton? Yes. When I heard the shot downstairs, I dashed up here as quickly as I could. What's going on in there? Philip, open the door! 
Oh, well, don't just stand there. Break it down. Don't panic, Leslie. I've, I've got a key. I'll try and push the one inside out of the keyhole. Oh, come on. Hurry up. <laughs> Nearly done it. Done it. And after we'd recovered enough, we dialed 999. And you arrived a few minutes later. Well, I see. But how come Miss... Uh... Leslie Sherrard. How come Miss Gerard was here... When we arrived. Well, I'd been to see a film at the Gomont Notting Hill Gate. I came over when it finished. Well, the time's fit, Governor. I was at that Gomont myself last night. A good film, eh? The Salerno Cliffs, to be exact, Sergeant, in case you doubt I was there. Uh, did I say that? No, you didn't. But it would save a lot of trouble, Miss Gerard, if you told us whether you'd met anybody you knew when you were at the cinema. No. But I had to give the cashier a £20 note. She was a bit short of change. Um, we talked a bit, so I'm sure she'd remember me going in. Oh, but anyway, what is this? I mean, why would I want to kill the man I was going to marry? <laughs> well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? But somebody did it. Somebody did kill him, and they did it very thoroughly. Governor... And not I... now, Sergeant. Give me the letter. Yes, sir. Miss Gerard, you quite sure this is the deceased's handwriting? Positive. He only started making his deeds that way recently, so it couldn't be a forgery. Good. It's funny, though, there's no name on it. How did you know it was for you when it was folded up like this? Huh. Oh, uh, it was in an envelope. I'm sorry, I must have put it away without thinking. Did you touch that envelope, Miss Hamilton? Uh, yes, I passed it to Leslie in the first place. Mr Tilly asked me to. So everybody's fingerprints are on it, so it won't make any difference if I... Hello? Your name's been typed, not written. Yes, I thought that was odd. Yes, and not very well, too. I mean, two of the letters are jumbled up and the line underneath isn't very straight. How's your typing, Mr Tilly? Well, it's a damn sight better than that. I write copy for advertising, so I use my typewriter every day. Is it here in the flat? Yes, it is. Sometimes I... Yes, Sergeant, some... check it out, will you? Right, sir. But can I tell you... Not what? now, Sergeant. A quick check. The lab boys will verify it later. Right. So, he shares the flat. Oh, no. uh, uh, did share the flat. It wouldn't have been for long. Philip was going to sling him out in favour of the lovely Leslie Gerard here. Well, it wasn't as bad as that, Leslie. And certainly not bad enough for murder. Miss Hamilton, did Mr Drury usually drink that wine? Well, it was one of his favourites. As a matter of fact, I brought that bottle up here at about 8.30. <laughs> Hello, Leslie. Bottle of Puni Mondreche with my compliments. I've opened it, so all we need is glasses. Special occasion? No. I noticed everybody else had gone out, so I thought you might be lonely. <laughs> Philip? Yes? What on earth have you got a gun for? For shooting rabbits in Queensway. <laughs> Sit down and we'll drink to, um... A long life. Which will last much longer without a gun. You'll be surprised. Long life. Good. I know. I tasted it before I came up. Oh, and I've got another treat for you, too. Now, just a minute. Ah, there. An Upman. Ready cut. Look, darling, it's very sweet of you, but you're barking up the wrong tree. Oh, I know Leslie Gerard is the woman in your life at the moment, but But, I... Leslie, dear, you're not going to take her place. I'm sorry, let's just stay friends and leave it at that. I shan't give up easily, you know. Is this all you came up to talk about? Well, what's wrong with a social chat? Nothing. Only I'm going to sound even ruder now. I'm expecting someone and they won't like it if you're here. Oh, charming. I didn't realise I was that unattractive. You're not, darling. It's just that... I'll explain later, all right? All right. All right. That, I'm afraid, is the last time I saw Philip alive. Mm, yes. Well, the only trouble with that is that there's nobody else to verify that that is actually what happened. Oh, you don't think that I'm I... not thinking. I'm merely stating a fact. I mean, your glass, for instance, it's empty now, and the bottle is a good deal lower, too. Well, Philip might have drained it, or some other visitor. Or you could be lying. Governor, it'll need technical backup. But I'll lay you any odds that this envelope was typed on that machine out there. Good. Now, about the, uh... What's that noise? 
It's one of them mini alarms. Yeah, I know it is, but where's it coming from? It's coming from the body. It's his watch alarm. If he gets up now, Governor, I'm going home. Oh, God. Spare their jokes, will you, Coop? I'm sorry, sir. Now, why? Why would he set his alarm for 11.30? He must have been expecting something to happen at 11.30, so he set his alarm to remind him just in case. Now, look, I don't want any noise, right? Sergeant, the door. Right. Come on, then. Don't be alarmed, sir. We were expecting you. Who, or rather, Mr. Drury was. Who told you that? Or rather, his watch. His watch? Oh, no. Mr. Drury was shot through the head with this gun. Strange. Very strange. What, what is? is? That is my gun. Welcome back to Who Done It. Philip Drury is still very much dead. And as yet, even Patrick Moe hasn't solved it, so it must be difficult. <laughs> now, he's been found with a bullet in his head. Not Patrick, but Philip Drury. <laughs> Two bullets have been fired from the gun. Half a glass of wine has disappeared. A rather suspicious foreign gentleman has turned up to reclaim the murder weapon. Inspector Go... Uh, that is the dead man's alarm watch to remind me that the story is about to start again. Mr. C. Riaki, Charles Wilson Riaki, Singapore Company Director, arrived in this country today. And I'm leaving again tomorrow morning, Allah be willing. He will not be willing, Mr. Riaki. It's obvious you were here earlier on. Yes, I came to see Philip Drury at five this afternoon. I had to give him something special. He was worried about guarding it. He thought somebody was onto him. The police, for instance? No, somebody pretty close to him. He asked to borrow my gun, and I arranged to pick it at 11.35. 11.35? Why 11.35? The danger would have passed by then. I see, so he set his alarm for 11.30, which would give him exactly five minutes to get rid of anybody before you came back. Only you arrived early, didn't you? What was it, Mr. Riaki? Drugs? No, Inspector. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Well, given time, you might, Mr. Riaki. Given time. Anyone else know about this gun? Yes, Inspector. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I'm afraid we all did. You see, at about 7.30 this evening, I was just finishing off some work in my room, and I overheard Philip talking. Oh, a workman must have dropped it on his way to the roof. I'll get it cleaned up tomorrow. Are you sure you won't come to the film with me, darling? No, thanks. That review in the paper gives the whole plot away. OK. Now, uh, are you sure you'll be all right on your own? Of course I will. I've taken special precautions tonight. What the hell are you doing with that? Nothing, really. Just looking after it for a friend of mine. Well, put it away. I, I hate fire. Now, stop fussing and get off to your film or you'll be late. I'll see you later. Bob? Uh, yes? Oh, you're going out then? Uh, yes, I promised a client I'd let him have this this evening. Is that alarm clock of yours working? Uh, no, no, I haven't had it fixed yet. Damn. Never mind, I'll have to use my watch. Will you be late? Well, I'm going to drop into the pub on the way back. There's someone I want to have a chat with. Be back about 11. And that's exactly what I did, Inspector. Mm. The landlord can verify that, I suppose. Well, for most of the time, yes, and I was talking to people. Did you go to the loo at all while you were there? Oh, yes. Why? Well, it depends on how long it takes you to go to the loo, doesn't it? Excuse me, sir. Are these your shoes? Yeah, what about them? What are you on about, Coop? Uh, let me show you, Governor. Look out of here. It's what I was trying to tell you earlier, Governor. 
see these line marks on the eaves? Mm. They're supposed to come from down there, outside these windows. Anybody coming through here would be bound to land on the line. Have you looked at the other shoes? Yeah, and there's not a mark on any of them. Only on Mr. Tilly's eels, and that's what's so strange. Well, what is? Well, yeah, you try it yourself and see what I mean. <laughs> all right, all right. Well done, Sergeant. Somebody has been tampering with the evidence. What I can't make out, Governor, is where that other bullet got to. Oh, don't worry about that. It's probably killed some unsuspecting squirrel in Hyde Park. I'm not with you, Governor. The second bullet was fired out of this window. Oh, I see. Excuse my socks, everyone. There's no point in dirtying the carpet. Well, as I was saying to the sergeant, the second bullet was fired out of this window. Well, I didn't see anybody on the fire escape after the shot, and my window was open. Yes, but when you heard the shot, Miss Hamilton, you ran up the inside staircase, didn't you? Yes. So you wouldn't have heard anybody, would you? Hello. Is that your makeup case, Miss Hamilton? Ah, oh, yes, it is. I wonder how it got over there. Well, you did say you left it behind in your story. Do you mind? Do you mind? Hello. Surprise, surprise. The silencer. I wondered where that had gone to, Sergeant. Well, I didn't put it in That'll there. That'll teach you a lesson, won't it, not to leave things behind? Is your name Leslie spelt the same way as hers? No, I'm E-Y. She's uh, I-E. Did, did Mr Drury write you love letters? Oh, not likely. They all went to Miss Gerard over there. Oh, Philip was always writing silly love letters. Every girl in his life always got a stream of them. I see. I don't think it's love letters that this particular killer is looking for. Mr. Riaki, come here. I think now's as good a time as any to tell us exactly what we are looking for. A microfilm, Inspector. Microfilm? Who the devil are you? Graham's the name. I hadn't heard from Drury, so I came along to see if anything had gone wrong. Gone wrong? Where'd you get those keys? Well, this flat does belong to the shop, so naturally I keep a few spares. The shop? It's a quaint old nickname for our office in the mail. MI6. Yes. Drury was one of our agents. A courier brought in some microfilm from the Far East. Drury was to have collected it and delivered it to me. And then I take it you will know Mr. Riaki? Never saw him before in my life. But then I wouldn't meet our frontline operatives, would I? Do you mind if I call in your special branch? Oh, no, help yourself, sir. Uh, call forensics, the lot. <laughs> and if they really do their job well, I might just tell them who did it. Well, there we are then. 006 is dead and Roger Moore has just been promoted. <laughs> so you can assume that everybody has a motive. It's just a question of who or how many of them are foreign agents. Right, panel. Now then, is there any part of the murder mystery that you would like to see again to help you pin down the murderer? Patrick. Uh, yes, John. I'd like to see the piece where Leslie... Leslie with a Y. Leslie Hamilton, our femme fatale, is... Uh, she's, uh, the little bit where she's just given the deceased the... Um, well, he's not deceased then, you know, but the bit where she's given him the, the drinks, the wine. Giving him the vino. Right, Lisa. Uh, yes, I'd like to see the bit where Bob Tilly was typing and um, um, Leslie, the other Leslie, and Philip were chatting in the background. Why do you want to see that? Tilly typing. I'm not going to tell you why I want to see that. No, <laughs> Mind your business, Mama. <laughs> Diana Coupland. I would like to see the first shot of the body. The first shot of the body? Ah. Is that all? Ah. Well, you can put a few little bits either side, <laughs> if you like. We will put a few little bits either side of the body. Right. Alfred. Well, if Lisa wants to see uh, Tilly typing, I'd like to see Sister Susie sewing shirts for soldiers. But <laughs> <laughs> if I can't have that, I'd like the bit where the sergeant, after, after uh, pointing out the footprints, 
closes the window. Please. Sergeant to close in window after showing footprints. Right. While we are finding each of those, uh, we will have a question from each of the panel, starting with you, Patrick. Where you go? Well, first of all, I'd like to protest well, at do. this portrayal of a TV cop as being arrogant, aggressive, violent, <laughs> bullying. <laughs> They're not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> and you should know. I don't like losing five quid. I don't like murderers. And I'm not as bad as my rival, Hackett. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Yes, um, I'd like to, uh, just to clear up, for, for our sake and their sake, um, Bob, when you were shown this inspector's card, did you look at it properly? Well, not really, no. I did look at it, but I didn't really take it in. But it, it, he was a real policeman. Oh, yeah. 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 And can I ask you, Inspector, when you looked actually at the MI6 man, Major Grand's card, it was a genuine... Genuine. Yes, just wanted to make sure that they were, they were real. Thank you. Good. You are now sure? I think so, yeah. Good. Diana, question? I'm not noted for being able to spell, but were there any Ds in that note at all? Uh, yes. were there any Ds in the note? Let's yes. have a look. Ah, well, yes. we'll forget yes, that were. question then. Yes, there were. I have, I have, it, have it here. Ah, well, yep. we'll forget that question. I'll ask another one. Good. Please do. <laughs> you said uh, Leslie Hamilton that you gave the letter for fingerprints immediately to Leslie Gerard at the first, you said, at the beginning. Yes. So was she in the room when you entered? No. No, she arrived later. And but you didn't see the letter until she'd arrived? Well, we had found the note. Um, Bob found it. And then he noticed that it was for Leslie and asked me to pass it to her because she was distressed. And you said you hadn't touched anything to do with the body. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. Lisa. Well, Inspector, uh, what was the actual time of death? About half past eight. About <coughs> half past eight. Oh, and, and was the bullet that killed him, the one from the gun, you know, you said there were two bullets. Well, the one that actually was in him, was that the one from the gun by the side <laughs> of him? Yes. Good. Thank you. Alfred? Yes, uh, Bob Tilly. What's your middle name? I don't have a middle name. Oh, I asked because there's, there are two Leslies, and if your middle name would have been Leslie, it might have meant there was rather more to Dory's love note than meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Patrick Mel. Um, Leslie, w without the Y, Leslie Gerard, um, you were very upset, weren't you, at your man's death? Um, can you tell me, in the letter, it, w it said, darling L, or something, I'm so upset. Did, did your fellow often call you L? Oh, yes, it was just a pet name for me. So it, it couldn't have been mistaken for being somebody else, or could it? Well, outside on the envelope, it was spelt Leslie I-E, so I knew it was for me. Yes, but that was typed, wasn't it? Why yes. did he take the trouble to type it if he'd written the other? You see, that's what's worrying me. Lisa, oh, there's a buzzer. That is for the first replay, which is yours, Diana. Uh, you want to see the very beginning of the story when Inspector Godfrey and Sergeant Coop first discover the body of Philip Drury. At this point, they still think it's suicide. Watch the monitor. There's Philip. And none of us have touched anything. Did that help? Not really. It didn't. <laughs> no. Well, should we forget that? However, I have thought of another thing. Oh, good. If you were about to move in, Leslie Gerard, why couldn't he live without you? Well, we'd had a bit of an argument before I left, and I think he was worried that I might not move in. We mm. didn't see the argument. You'd presumably made it up by the time we saw the piece of film with you going out to the cinema. Yes, I mean, nothing is ever perfect, so there was always the chance that I wouldn't be able to move in with him. Uh, mm. The chance big enough to kill yourself? Well, that's why it upset me so much, because I really was going to live with him. Patrick. Um, yes, Leslie, Lady Hamilton, with a Y. Um, you said uh, to somebody, I can't remember who it was, that Philip was going to get kicked out soon, did you not? No, Philip was going to kick him out. Oh, that's what I meant. Philip was going to kick Bob out, yes. Mm. Why? How did you know that? 
Well, he mentioned in passing that he was going to have to move out. Was this general knowledge in the household? Mm, I don't know. I mean, he just said it one night. Yeah. Yes, Lisa. Um, Sergeant. Sergeant. Um, how did you know the gun was fired twice? Well, I'm just relying on my expertise and experience of about 27 years in the force. Wonderful. You see, oh. uh, do you mind if I ask uh, no, Mr. Riaki something? No, please. Please do. Mr. Riaki, um, when you gave the Luger to Mr. Drury... Yes. Had he got a full magazine? He did have a full magazine. Right. A full magazine is eight bullets. And there were six left in the gun when I took the magazine out. Right. Also, um, how far away would you estimate the gun was shot from? Oh, it's hard to tell, but uh, close enough for it to be suicide, I suppose. But well, I mean, this close or this close? Yeah. In between. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. <laughs> An ambiguous reply, yes. Well, we're ready now for the next replay. This is yours, Patrick. You asked to see Leslie Hamilton when she comes up to Drury's flat with some wine and discovers a gun in the glass cabinet. Yeah. Eyes down, please. I noticed everybody else had gone out, so I thought you might be lonely. <laughs> Philip? Yes? What on earth have you got a gun for? For shooting rabbits in Queensway. <laughs> Sit down and we'll drink to, um... A long life. Which will last much longer without a gun. Oh, a worried bloodhound. <laughs> you were rather shocked to see that gun, weren't you, Leslie? Yes. Yes. Um, can I ask, um, Mr. Charles Riaki a question, please? Um, how did you know... You see, we've got to clear up whether you're real or not, and it's very difficult. How, uh, when you... How did you... Had you dealt with the deceased before, Philip? Was, were you a, a normal contact? Not before. But you knew the house. Did you have a key to this flat? There seemed to be an awful lot of keys floating around. No, I didn't have a key. And you were, what time did you arrive? First, five o'clock, wasn't it? Five o'clock. I met him at five o'clock. Why did you leave him your gun? Uh, for protection. He said he was worried. And he said to you that there was something was going to happen. It would be cleared up by 11.30. That's right. And he didn't tell you what it was? No, he did. He said... Uh, Somebody was on to him. Ah. Yes, Alfred. Yes, I believe in Mr. Yaki. Uh, <clears throat> Major Grand, you, you, you waited for, your, for a courier to come from Singapore with your microfilm developed, correct? Mm hmm. Well, why don't you use boots in Finchley? I always <laughs> do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost baffled, but not quite. <laughs> yes, Lisa. Um, I have a question here for Leslie Hamilton. Um, when you were having the wine with Philip, why did he swap round the glasses? I mean, did he think you were going to poison him or something? Well, I don't think so. I, I don't know, really. The only thing I noticed was that one of them had a chip in it, and that was the one he gave me. So. <laughs> oh. oh. It's ready for the next replay. Uh, this is yours, Lisa. You wanted part of Bob Tilly's flashback when he was typing and overheard what Drury was saying to Leslie Gerrard in the next room. Eyes on the monitor. Talking. Mm, it's a lovely evening, isn't it? Oh, what's that? Oh, a workman must have dropped it on his way to the roof. I'll get it cleaned up tomorrow. Are you sure you won't come to the film with me, darling? No, thanks. That review in the paper gives the whole plot away. OK, now, uh, are you sure you'll be all right? Yes. Well, I have several questions. Um, Bob. Um, you know you said you typed well in the beginning because yes. you were a copy uh, advertising thingy. Anyway, um, but in your flashback, you patently made an error. And also, you were typing an envelope, weren't you? That's right. Mm. Well, what was the envelope to? <laughs> <laughs> well, the envelope was a, 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 rep a re reply addressed envelope for the client that I was giving the copy to. Uh, yes. The address of my boss was on it. You didn't redo it though, did you? Left it with the error in. So obviously you were quite yes, used to leaving errors in. Well, I didn't think it would matter that much on an envelope. I wouldn't well, make an error in the body of the yes. uh, of a copy. Would you don't mind about errors on envelopes? That's right, I do. Right, clue number. Yes, also, Diana. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Mr. Riaki, did you bring the gun with you into this country? Yes, I did. How did you get it through? Well, I normally carry a cine camera with me, and it has a hidden compartment. Oh. <laughs> Alfred? Yes. He really shoots films, doesn't he, this fellow? <laughs> um, <laughs> what was on the microphone? Ah, this is uh, top secret. Um, 
There we are. There is the buzzer for the last replay. This is yours, Alfred. You asked for the scene where Sergeant Coop closes the window after looking at the effects of footprints in the lime outside. Excuse my socks, everyone. There's no point in dirtying the carpet. Well, as I was saying to the sergeant, the second bullet. Yes, Alfred. Yeah, that tells me nothing. Ah. Um, <laughs> Miss Hamilton, would you tell me honestly, were you having an affair with Mr. Drury? Well, it, um, I had been. I see. And he was obviously a, pretty much of a ladies' man, wasn't he? Yes, he it did. may not have been the bullet that killed him after all. You see what I'm trying to get at? <laughs> <laughs> There's one point we, we don't seem to have covered, and that is that I, I've just been looking at this note. And it reads, let me remind you, Darling L, I can't live without you. All my love, P. Your name is Lisa. Patrick, <laughs> you were P. Where were you on the night of the murder? I found out. <laughs> oh, yes, you have a question. Yes, yes, I have. I have. I haven't finished with Bob. You see. All right, carry on. Oh, Finish yes, him off. Bob, um, how did the lime get on your shoes? I've no idea at all. You no idea? No, no. It was a oh. surprise to me. Oh, Can I ask also, a question apropos of that. Yes, uh, Inspector, did you check the, li the 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 stuff on Bob's shoes? Was it lime? Or did you, did you not have time to check it? No, it was lime. It was the same as um, what was outside the window. Are you sure? It couldn't have been makeup taken out of the bag that was left on the mantelpiece. No, no. no it was, it was too. There was too much of it. Yeah. Yes, Diana. Did you check the other shoes of the other people? Yes. Well, I didn't, but my sergeant did. You yes. See, no the... one else had lime. No, no there. there was no lime anywhere on the carpets or anywhere. Did you? Leslie Gerard, change your shoes from the time you left to go to the cinema. No, I walked straight out the front door and came back in the same shoes. Yes, Alfred. Yes, this sergeant worries me. So I've got it. Sergeant Coop or is it Co-op? Coop. Coop. <laughs> <laughs> bad writing. It's not true, sergeant. It's bad writing. Here. Sergeant Coop. You see, what worries me about this affair is that you may have very well have staged the murder to win your five-pound bet. You see, <laughs> but. <laughs> Life is not that cheap. No, you see, what makes me further suspicious about the sergeant is the fact that um, he said that the, the film at the Odeon uh, Notting Hill Gate was a good one. I saw it, it was pretty lousy. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed Bugs Bunny, but I hated the film. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Um, can I just ask very quickly, Leslie, um, what colour was your, uh, the bottle that you brought in? Green, pale green. Pale green, and it had white wine in it, didn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Will that do for the minute? Because yes. that's the buzzer for the sign, which means that the panel have now finished asking questions. Oh, oh. And it means that they've now got to write down who they think done it and any clues they may have spotted. Meanwhile, for you at home, one last chance to see one of the more important clues. Now, listen to this. And listen to this panel. I have written a poem. It won't exactly tell you how Drury got himself dead, but it'll help you a lot as to who it is not and where murderers fear to tread. <laughs> well done, Sergeant. Somebody has been tampering with the evidence. What I can't make out, Governor, is where that other bullet got to. Oh, don't worry about that. It's probably killed some unsuspecting squirrel in Hyde Park. Now, think carefully about that, if you will. A good visual cue. But who did it eliminate? May I have your card, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. <laughs> I've drawn a star on there so you know it's me. I thought you might. <laughs> no chance. All right. Right, panel, no changing your minds. I've got your cards here. In line, from the right, who done it and why? Patrick. Well, I'm sorry, it was the lady with the crocodile tears, Leslie Gerard. Um, she, it was too obvious that, that uh, it was tried, the murderer tried to plant it on the, the guy with the stuff on his shoes. That was too obvious. Um, and the silencer in the, the other girl's handbag. Uh, and the rest of the people weren't in it. I think she slipped out the back of the cinema. She either was a spy or she was just afraid of that uh, the guy, it was a crime, a crime, a crime passion, a crime of passion. Thank you, Patrick Murr. Lisa, 
Well, I'm so horrified. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's Leslie Hamilton. Yes. And I think what she did, she shot him with a silencer on. So mm. I was worried. About, and um, then she set up the note. She'd written the note, set up the note. She put the silencer in her makeup bag. And while she was putting up the note, she forgot her makeup bag. She then fired the gun out the window, put it down, rushed outstairs, down through her window, which she said was open, down the fire escape, through, round up the back, by the time that Bob Tilly was getting there. My God, what an athletic lady. <laughs> <laughs> she was very, she was jealous of the other Leslie. Yes. Because she, the affair was over. She didn't want anybody else to have him. Mm -hmm. She made it look like suicide. I drugged the wine, that's right. She drugged the wine so that she could shoot him in the head. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. I sincerely hope so. <laughs> Diana Copeland. I too think it was uh, Leslie Gerard. I think it couldn't have been Leslie Hamilton. The lady was far too, the character, was far too unsympathetic. I do think that had she done it, she would have tried to be a little more charming about the whole thing. I think it was Leslie Gerard. Um, there is no reason at all why there should be that note uh, from the murdered man. Uh, you were perfectly friendly when you went out, very worried about him, both seemingly very happy. Um, Thank you very much indeed, Dana. Yes. Alfred? I concur with Dr. Watson on my right here, because I think it's Leslie Gerard, because I think this was the work of a <laughs> counter-agent, not Crim Passionel at all. And she's the only one wearing Russian tights. Got <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> gum written on the soles, you see. <laughs> she knew about the lime. She knew, and when, when, when uh, Riaki said that he was afraid of somebody, that Tudori was afraid of somebody close to him, well, well, she was the closest to him. Also, she knew the plot of the film, so if she was questioned about it, she had an alibi. She made a big hoo-ha about a £20 note or a £10 note at the box office, and she went into the films, slipped out again. Uh, why should she be the only one to know about the change of deeds if he's written notes to other people, I, it says here? And also, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> No, that's it, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I must stop you. That's what the panel think. And now we will find out the truth of the matter. Will the real whodunit or dunnits stand up, please? <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Right. Thank you. Well, there we are. We had three people who got it right. Well done, Lisa. <laughs> you got it completely wrong. Uh, I think that Alfred wins. I mean, Patrick got it right, Diana got it right, but Alfred's clues were absolutely spot on, so if there's a prize to be given, which there isn't, you've got it, Alfred. And I have the Russian well, no, type. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> Alfred. Patrick <laughs> and Diana. <laughs> well, I trust a lot of you at home got it right as well, but did you spot all the relevant clues? Lisa Gerard didn't need to see the movie, as she knew the story from the review in the papers. She killed Philip using the silencer, put one of his love notes, which also happened to sound like a suicide note, into an envelope, and typed her own name rather badly. Now, the false evidence that she set up was A, planting the silencer in Leslie Hamilton's makeup bag, a B, putting lime onto the heels of Tilly's shoes, a stupid mistake, because it should have been on the soles as well, and then she fired the gun out of the window, put the gun by the body, and went down the fire escape. She knew about the lime, so she took her own shoes off. Rather complicated it was, but that's what it's all about, isn't it? Next week, the Cornish coast, my dear, is the setting for some dirty work at Seagull's Roost. In other words, someone's been done in at the inn. So look alive, my hearties, and see whether you can spot who it was that done the dastardly deed. So for my panel cast and me, it's goodbye until next week. Oh, incidentally, uh, we have just had the microfilm blown up, and... Um, Although I can definitely see that it is Patrick Moa, nobody's been able to identify the 33 girls in the picture.